My name is Fuad Ahmed. I'm an actor. I've worked extensively in film, television, and theater. I've worked for Spielberg. I've done the red carpet at TIFF. You might even say that I'm Canadian famous, which means I'm not really famous at all, but sometimes people recognize me from a gum commercial I did in 2011. When I was asked to speak, I truthfully had anxiety as it forced me to think about my own career so far and reflect on my story. Am I thriving? For a long time, I defined thriving as being successful in your career as an immigrant to Canada and a person of color who was also Muslim. There are so many adjustments I have made consciously and subconsciously so that I could try to achieve what I thought was thriving. And how many of us have done that? Regardless of your background, what parts of yourself do you negate and hide in order to achieve success? When you cover up these parts of yourself, are you truly thriving or are you just trying to survive? For 15 years of my life and almost the entirety of my career as an actor, I used the screen name Gabe Gray. I only reclaimed my name professionally in June of 2021. Throughout my career, when I felt comfortable enough to tell certain people that I used a stage name, I'd get one of the following responses. Why? Why would you do that? Or, hmm, makes sense. I get why you did that. So, why? Why did I do that? Well, in the late 90s and early 2000s, when I first dreamed of being an actor, there was almost zero representation of anyone who looked like me in the media. And if there was, it was generally pretty negative. After 9-11, I went through several agents who just didn't know what to do with me. Many had suggested I use a stage name because I didn't fit into the industry standard of what they thought a brown man should look like and whatever that meant. And I could see that in my day-to-day -day auditions, the, the constant mispronouncing of my name, the constant asking where I was from, the constant commenting on my X, Y, or Z. Now, I get that how you look is part of the biz. It's a visual medium. I get that. But I was having to explain my existence before I was allowed to audition. And I was tired. The audition that changed it all for me is when upon hearing my name, the producer and director turned their backs to me, threw my resume to the side, and had a conversation with themselves while I attempted to audition for them. Racism and discrimination can take many forms. It can be blatant and in your face, but it can also be subtle like dust in the air. When it's blatant, you know. You know exactly where you stand. And when it's subtle, you're left confused and bewildered. Did, did that just happen to me? Am, am I overthinking it? Why would, they, why would they do? No, no, no. <laughs> that couldn't have happened. But you know it happened. My dream was to act, to thrive as an actor, and I couldn't break into this industry, not with this name thrive. I could barely survive. So I changed my name to Gabe Gray. And within a week, I was working, being booked, without even auditioning, off of my headshot. My treatment in audition rooms completely changed. Now I would walk into an audition room and no one asked me how to pronounce my name. No one was asking where I was from. No one commenting on my X, Y, or Z. I was allowed to be in my element. I was allowed to show my talent. I was allowed to thrive, but also is this what it's like for the white guys? Because damn, this is nice. So I booked and I worked and I worked and I booked. Networking was a breeze. Try saying Fuad at a loud party. Now say Gabe. Which one is that producer or director gonna remember? Oh, but actors and performers, they change their names all the time. What's the big deal? Yes, yes they do. Reginald Dwight became Elton John. Maurice Micklewhite became Michael Caine and Norma Jean Mortensen became Marilyn Monroe. Here's the thing, changing your name to make it sound more glamorous is one thing. Changing your name because you're facing discrimination, well, that's another. 
And this isn't something that just happens in the entertainment industry. There have been many studies showing that white sounding names on resumes are more likely to be called in for interviews. In 2003, around the time I was trying to be an actor, the National Bureau of Economic Research did a field study where they sent out resumes with either white sounding names or black sounding names. The result? White names needed to send 10 resumes to get one callback. Black names needed to send 15. Well, that's a 50% increase in callback rates. The study went on to indicate that having a white name yields as many callbacks as having an additional eight years of experience. The authors of the study wrote, discrimination appears to bite twice, making it harder not only for African-Americans to find a job, but also to improve their employability. Well, I am not black. I am a person of color and had a similar experience. Fouad Ahmed, no interest. Gabe Gray, he's so talented, get him to wardrobe. One gig led to another and another, doors opened. I was honestly shocked at how it all seemed to come together. But I wasn't about to look my gift horse in the mouth. My dreams were coming true. Changing my name and the immediate turnaround in my career reinforced the idea that these were the sacrifices I had to make in order to be an actor. Whew. Ah, but that was 2003, that was 20 years ago, things have changed. Well, in 2014, director Ridley Scott was facing mounting criticism for the all-white cast of the ancient Egyptian epic, Exodus, Gods and Kings. He told Variety magazine, well, I can't mount a film of this budget where I have to rely on tax rebates in Spain and say that my lead actor is Mohammed so-and-so from such and such. I'm just not gonna get it financed. So the question doesn't even come up. Well, it's easy to be horrified that someone could so callously say that. Scott was speaking the truth of the industry. And maybe he was just trying to explain how the whole industry is just a bit of a mess. But his words and actions show that he was perfectly comfortable with it. Yeah, but that doesn't happen in the real world. Well, in 2018, a study from Ryerson and the University of Toronto found skilled applicants with Chinese, Indian, or Pakistani names faced substantial discrimination from organizations when they were deciding who to call in for an interview. Like, you're 20 to 40% less likely to be interviewed. The, the larger organization is discriminating a little less frequently. Oh, silver lining. In analysis, they found that in larger organizations, all you needed was an extra degree to offset that Asian name disadvantage when competing with a white name without a degree. So with an Asian name, you'd need to spend four years getting a degree and racking up a whole bunch of student debt just to be equal to someone with a white name with no degree and no student debt. Oh, and fun fact, the extra degree doesn't help at all at smaller organizations. So to all the folks that asked me why, why did I do that? Well, that's why. I'm not saying Ridley Scott pulled me aside and gave me some career advice or that I even knew about these studies, but I knew enough about the world and how it works. I remember the very first gig I booked after changing my name. I was playing a drifter who gets run over by a drunk driver in a music video. I was terrified of being found out. My makeup artist was also a brown guy, and while he was working on me, my nervousness got the better of me, and I blurted, and I blurted out, Gabe isn't my real name, it's a stage name, my real name is Fawad. And he was really great about it, and he just kind of laughed along. The funny part is that whenever the director called out, Gabe, you have to say it like three to four times before I was like, oh, oh right, that's me, that's me. But I eventually got used to it. Cut to June 10th, 2021. I'm uploading audition tapes labeled Gabe Gray, and they keep crashing. I am frustrated and annoyed, but to add to that, the name Gabe Gray feels alien. After 15 years with it, after it served me for so long, it feels weird. It feels empty. I feel empty. And the truth is I was feeling weird and empty for a while, and I didn't know how to rid myself of it. I was conflicted. I've had this name for 15 years. It's how the industry knows me. Will I be destroying my career? Will people think I'm a sellout? You know, I changed it to work, but if I change it back now, will people think I'm just jumping on the diversity bandwagon? But at that moment, I don't care. I don't care. I'm done. I write a Facebook post informing my friends and contacts in the industry that I'm reclaiming my name, Fawad Ahmed. Lots of friends send me messages of, of love and support 
And while I am grateful for the love, I'm actually bogged down in all the clerical work involved, updating websites, talking to my agent, calling my unions, doing exciting stuff. A uh, family friend from the CBC reaches out and asks me if I'd like to write a first person essay about my name change. I say, sure, not thinking much of it. I write it over the weekend and send it off. I don't expect anyone to read it. I expect it to sit on the internet in obscurity. To be honest, why would anyone care? The article went on to be the number one article on CBC Arts for 2021. It goes viral and is shared around the world. My inbox is flooded with messages for weeks. I, with trepidation, read the comments. Here are a few. I changed my name. People kept messing up the pronunciation at auditions and interviews. My grandparents changed their names upon coming to Canada and for business. It never ends. Maybe now? It's sad. I used to apply for the same job with different names. My birth name or Kathy? Guess who got a call back? I received my new name on my first day in the US. I understand the emptiness feeling he is describing. I named my kids Muslim names for their beautiful meanings and often wonder if their careers will be set back. I did two syllables as well and chose carefully to make sure that they couldn't get screwed up. But still, daily, please people, just try. There were so many other people sharing their life stories in the comment section, direct messages on Twitter. I wasn't alone. We weren't alone. This is a thing that people are doing to survive. Sorry. I sometimes wonder, would I have had the same career if I never changed it? Those early gigs that opened so many doors, was that because of my talent or my name? Remember that study I cited earlier? A white sounding name is equal to eight years of experience. When I booked one of my first substantial roles, the producer called to congratulate me and I was floored and thanked them for, for writing a South Asian character because larger roles were so rare for us. They thanked me for being a good actor because it was hard to find good South Asian actors. Did people think I was a better, more seasoned actor because of my name? Did I think I was a better actor because of my name? I don't have an answer. There's no time machine that can show me what alternative futures I might have had. If I never changed my name, would I have become disheartened and given up? Or would I have powered through and have a completely different reality that I have now? I don't know. I know this. My name is a part of my identity. It's a part of who I am. Yet I navigated a career by removing a part of myself. After reading all the messages and, and comments that people sent me, I couldn't help but think, all of these people are just removing parts of themselves so that they can be seen as equal. And as much as I may have worked and as successful as I may have felt, it was never really all of me there. It's been about nine months since I reclaimed my name. What's that been like? Well, the day after my essay was published, I was on set for a facial prosthetic fitting and I wasn't allowed to talk. Uh, one of the crew members came up and thanked me for writing it because he was going through the same thing. It was really hard not to cry in that moment because I also wasn't allowed to cry because of all the stuff on my face. <laughs> Uh, the first audition I had after reclaiming my name, I had to slate, which is where you say your name, height, and location. And I kept saying, hey there, my name's Gabe Gray. I'm 5'10 from Toronto. Ooh. <laughs> it took me about 10 to 15 tries before I was able to say my own name again, before it felt okay coming out of my own mouth. Now, when I'm meeting people, I, I take the time to pronounce my name and teach them how to say it. Everyone has been awesome about it. Everyone is trying and making an honest effort. My old friends, though, they're the ones who keep slipping up and calling me gay out of habit, but it's okay. I get it. In my career, has there been a change? No. I was busy before and I'm still busy. Admittedly, I'm well established in my career and the article was a bit of a hullabaloo. 
I've just been asked to speak at more events and panels on the subject. That makeup artist that I blurted out my confession to 15 years ago, I reunited with him last summer on a TV show we were both working on. Artistically, I feel a lot more free. I have a more confident, secure sense of myself and any choices I make in my work. And that's my story. And I hope it's as smooth and easy for others who decide to reclaim their name. But it might not be. Remember that first study I mentioned that was done in 20, 2003? Well, it was done again in 2021, and not much has changed. On average, applications from candidates with black names get fewer callbacks than similar applications bearing a white name, despite having comparable applications to their white counterparts. So, what needs to change? When some of the companies were contacted about why they look past ethnic names, they said ethnic meant immigrant which raised questions about the applicant's social and communication skills to be successful in the job. Well, that's simply not true. Fouad Ahmed is as good an actor as Gabe Gray ever was. The onus is not on us to change our names to make employers feel more comfortable. The onus is on employers to become aware of their biases and innate discrimination and remove the systems that they have built that continue to support it. Demisha Jennings, a certified professional resume writer, was interviewed in Forbes about this and recommends a blind resume system. A blind resume system helps organizations find the best suited candidates for a role while preventing name discrimination. There are courses your HR can take. There are diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging consultants and specialists you can hire. Google is your friend. And if you are someone who has changed their name, or any other part of your identity, to acquiesce to the dominant culture. Wherever you are on your journey is okay. That's where you need to be. I can't tell you how many times people would give me unsolicited advice and say that I should go back to Fawad. Instead of helping me, it really annoyed me and pushed me even further away from my birth name. I'm not here to convince you to do anything. I'm here to tell you that you are not alone. I understand why you had to do it. You did it to survive. And if a time comes where you choose to reclaim your identity, to thrive in your fullest sense, we will all be celebrating with you.